This is for the free thinkers, the curious beings that swim upstream, who see possibilities, not problems, that learn from the past, live by the present, and create the future. This is the I Love Ugly Audio Show. Welcome to the I Love Ugly Audio Show. My name is Valenti Nozic, creative director and founder of I Love Ugly. On this episode, our digital director, Will Munro, and I dive into an in-depth discussion around the importance of goal setting for the start of the new year and how to kickstart your 2020 off in the right direction. We cover topics ranging from how to set your goals, our own daily morning routines, the power of habits, and how to harness and control your thoughts. We know that setting goals, big or small, can be daunting and unfamiliar to a lot of people. So we wanted to record this discussion in the hopes that it would give you some clarity around the importance of it and how to make a start and also give you an inside look into our own goals, how we set our own routines and habits. We want to help you identify and define what your why is for 2020 because the stronger your why is, the easier your how becomes. Now grab some paper, get a pen because you're going to need it for this one. Enjoy the episode. What's up podcast listeners, it's V here and then today I'm going to have a conversation with Will, our digital director who's got a, the equal passion, has a, shares an equal passion with me in terms of personal development and becoming the best version of yourself and this little episode we're going to just talk about little hacks that we both do personally, um, ways to ways and a few techniques how to get the best out of 2020 uh, what to do between now and the start of 2020. We're also going to ask and discuss certain questions about, say, if you're coming back to work and you've had the time of your life and you come back to work and you're miserable, that's a, you, you need to start making some serious calls because if you keep carrying that, repeating that pattern, uh, you're just going to set yourself for, uh, up for another crappy year. So welcome to the show. Will, what's up, bro? It's good to be here. Yeah, nice, mate. Brand, nice. New, brand new year yeah brand new year possibilities definitely definitely limitless opportunities absolutely although we're recording us on the 21st of december 18th 18th of december um you're almost on holiday (laughs) i'm just into the future man but no it's pretty cool so we just wanted to do this while we're in a real good momentum and flow and uh get this episode all recorded and stagger it for the for whenever we decide Holiday to release it beginning season, beginning yeah. of january mm. but yeah man so what's um yeah how should we kind of kick this off bro what do you got in mind well basically i think you know when people are listening to this it's going to be early jan um everyone's kind of coming back to crashing back to reality yeah um if you can put it like that usually so, probably drunk and excess yeah, of yeah. alcohol drugs crappy Potentially food on some come no, downs but no um, exercise <laughs> <laughs> everybody's let loose we'll put yeah. it that way yeah even if you haven't you know it's a brand new fresh year um and this is the time to kind of set the vision um mm. for the year yeah i agree um, so what do you reckon what do you reckon in terms of uh like what would your advice be for someone to actually just kick start the year first piece of paper first start what would you do what are you doing and then i'll tell you what i'm doing what would i do or what are you doing what i would yeah what i what i do do kind of every year and what i would recommend Depending on where you're at, I think this is a really good exercise, whether you've just got into personal development, whether you've been doing it, you've been into it for 10, 20 years, is to just really carve out a vision for the year, Mm. you know, and even beyond that, if you don't, you've you've really, personal development stems off this um, idea of what you want your life to be, you know, who you want to become. And so coming into 2020, the biggest thing that I would do is I would just go back to my big goals. You know, where do I where do I want to go in my life? What do I want to do? What do I want to achieve? What is the person I want to become? Um, and then I would see, am I still completely aligned with that? Is that where I want to go? I would make certain tweaks there, and I would I would firstly just focus big picture beyond 2020. I'd focus big picture even the next kind of 10 years. What do I want to do? And then from there, I would come back to 2020 and I would be like, okay, if this is what I want to do in my life, what do I need to do in 2020 to get there? Mm. And so I'd work back from there and I'd say, okay, in 2020, um, I would pick, you know, three or four big core goals 
that I would um, want to be go, going after. Yeah. And then... Um, big, big but achievable. Big but achievable because it's but like... scary too. Yeah. There's the element of um, thinking really, really big. It's like that quote, right? Everybody um, overestimates what they can do in a year mm-hmm. and underestimates what they can do in a decade, right? Mm-hmm. Is that how it goes? Yep. Yeah, and so it's not going too big in um, the short term, but, you know, progress, right? Mm. Like progress is the key to everything. Yeah. And so it's ensuring that they're big enough to scare you into action, um, but they're not small enough so that you just smash them out of the park easily. Yeah. And so what I would do is I would come back and I would pick a few goals, a few few of my biggest goals that I want to achieve this year. Um, and then, you know, I've got to know why the hell I'm doing them. You know, you, like the biggest thing for me when you're setting goals is it's not just setting goals for the point of the exercise. It's why do you want these goals? You know, like setting the reasons why you want to do these things. Because the why, the stronger your why is, the easier the how is. Mm. You know, as you know, um, Jim Rohn is massive, massive um, pusher of that. And he's like one of the OG dudes of all of personal development mm. in this world. And so coming up with really, really clear reasons why I want these different goals um, in my life, what they're going to contribute to, how they're going to impact me, um, and really, you know, looking at what the future would be like while I achieve those goals. And then from there, okay, these are my three or four biggest goals that I want to do this year, bringing that back down into the short-term period, so say the next 8 to 12 weeks or 6 to 10 weeks, kind of that period. You know, what are the what are the habits, the keystone habits that I need to build and the behaviors that I need to change um, to get there. And so going from biggest picture to the 2020 picture to short term picture, mm-hmm. what do I need to do? What behavior do I need to change? What bad habits do I need to get rid of? Mm. Things like that. Um, and then really, really, really mapping them out how each and every single new behavior or new habit links to my 2020 goals and then how it further links to my big picture goals. Mm. Um, and so that would be the over the overview gist of what I would do. Mm. Obviously, it's not just done in one session. You know, yeah. I'm doing that over a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, just here and there and just constantly ensuring that this vision that I'm crafting for myself um you know is really really strong Mm. and it's like deep down that's what Mm. exactly what i want yeah and it almost needs to be fun and exciting it shouldn't be laborious you know no i think that's a real trick and also what people get caught up with they almost look at like a a boring task which they need to do Mm. but it's absolutely essential that you actually write it down and crystallize that target and what you want it is hard though it is real hard but the thing is it's like it's very doable Mm. these harder things I'd way rather do that yeah. than do another year of bullshit that yeah. I absolutely hate. That I see as, as, yeah. as hard. Absolutely. I just don't understand why people would accept that, yet they wouldn't sit down and figure out what they actually want on a piece yeah, of yeah. paper for a couple of hours, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's hard doing this one exercise over a few days, Yeah, but it's even harder putting up with a shitty life. Yeah, yeah, t- totally, man, definitely. So yeah, I, I kind of do something like much, much similar. Uh, usually what I do is once I'm done, like in my case, I'll be done on the 24th of December. I'll spend probably five days not even thinking about anything, mm. not thinking about work, completely clearing my mind and being five day meditation. Yeah. Oh, just <laughs> no, being, I'm kidding, I'm yeah, kidding. just being hundred percent present with my wife and yeah, kids because sure. I don't really get that luxury during, during a year. And I think I can learn a lot from that as well. And just having some fun. And then once I kind of feel like my brain and my body and spirit and everything is recharged then I'll, I'll just bring out the white piece of paper yeah and then um and then i'll just let the inspiration strike and i've got my kind of formula where i'm like i i, I actually look at my previous goals and i look at what i ticked off and what i didn't mm. and sometimes i'm surprised about things that i ticked off that i did i forgot to mm. tick off because i was just too busy and then i um and then i also asked myself was like man like when i at the time of writing this goal when i read it i wasn't actually thinking i thought i was thinking big but it also goes yeah. to show how much i've grown in 12 months when mm. i look back and what i used to think was big is no longer big mm. so i'm always trying to push and stretch as much as i can about thinking big and i kind of break it down in segments so i've got like financial yeah. i've got the spiritual i've got the health 
I've got my relationships and I've got all my sets of goals for all of those. Mm. I don't really have an overarching one. Mm. Um, nah. Overarching, I've got like a bunch of different, because when I went to the Tony Robbins uh, date with Destiny, he kind of, what did he call it? He called the wheel, the wheel of life. Yeah. And you basically have the different areas of your life, like spiritual, physical, um, you know, mental relationships, finances and stuff. And you kind of rate it yeah. and then you kind of join it all together. And the whole point is for it to be like a smooth circle. Mm. Like more often than not, you can, um, you can start to see the holes or the gaps in your life. And it's just making sure that you get that, that balance. Because the thing is, is like, you can have an amazing relationship or your finances are going good, but then your friendships are crap or mm. your, your health is crap. And the thing is, is like, unless you have that balance, no matter how good some aspect of your life is, it's going to bring down the quality of all of it. So I kind of do that and I, I kind of segment it. I've kind of got my 10 year where I want to be um, and making sure I'm aiming towards that. And then um, I kind of, yeah, just break it all down. Same thing, mm. compelling reasons why, because of why and the compelling reasons what brings you in. Mm. And even the reasons don't have to be some crazy, like, people got to remember no one's going to read this stuff except for you yeah so just be as wild and make the reasons stupid it, it could it even is be. crazy how you can be writing that down and still think even though nobody would yeah you're look still at paranoid it, you're still paranoid yeah. and like a bit scared yeah about or, what you're writing or, down. or embarrassed yeah but like why be embarrassed it's only yourself yeah. like um yeah so i kind of do that and a lot of my reasons could even be for a particular thing is like to pr prove such and such wrong yeah you know and uh i know it's probably not the best thing but whatever <laughs> kind of gets you gets you that fuel just yeah, just yeah, do yeah. it um so yeah i kind of do that so yeah a bit of decompression complete clearing of mind emptying everything and just like living life not being so go 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 mm. just kind of wind down slow down a little bit but at the same time maintaining your habits like the exercise and you know, it's all good to kind of blow out on food on Christmas and stuff like that. Mm. But if you do that continuously for three weeks, you're going to yeah. develop a pretty bad, bad habit. And like, I just feel probably like you, right? Like, you know, we've had that eight week challenge in the office about being pretty clean eating because, you know, we made it pretty clear in this next, this next few months in October when we had the meeting, next few months is going to be pretty tough, pretty physically and emotionally. Mm -hmm. And just the endurance of it is going to be challenging. So making sure that we're all keeping in tip top shape mm. and staying healthy. And we had that eight week challenge and we just feel fucking good. Amazing. And it's like, you feel so good like that without eating, stuffing your face with crap. Yeah. It's like, why would we want to even jeopardize that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's almost like Which you is, become addicted to yeah, feeling yeah. like this, but it's a good addiction because mm. it's so sustainable long-term mm. and it's only going to lead to a better, better quality life. It's like, why would yeah. you even want to jeopardize that? Getting addicted to the feeling of a good habit is like an yeah, amazing man. thing. Getting addicted to feeling good without, yeah. but through natural, without, mm. yeah, That's chemically like, induced um, substances. When you're building a habit, um, Charles Duhigg has a book, Power of Habit, amazing book. Definitely read that. James Clear does a ton of things on habits. Um, but in the, in the Power of Habit, he talks about this concept around um, having a reward for building your habits. Yeah. And he, there's this one where he's talking about building the habit of physical exercise. And mm -hmm. so say somebody, if you're struggling out there and you want to start exercising and you really struggle to because you love food so much, da 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 He says, what you can do is go to the gym um, and your reward, for, or you could go to the gym and you could just, just go for one minute. Just go for one minute and just do a tiny ass habit and just all you need to do is just start building the habit. Well, what you can do is even for exercising is he, you can use something counterintuitive like use your favorite snack, like your favorite meal or whatever, even if it's like McDonald's, Wendy's or whatever after you're having your exercise. But the key is just to start a habit, right? But using that reward as like something that you really, really desire. Mm -hmm. And then so the more you complete this and you only get that reward, so that, that meal that you love after you exercise. And so you do the exercise because you love the meal in the beginning anyway. But the more you do the habit, the more you actually intrinsically realize how good the um, the exercise is for you. And then you start to feel the physical benefits, the, the mental benefits and all these different things. And you actually don't even start 
um, to want the food anyway because of, you know you don't want to exercise and yeah. eat that shitty food. But yeah. using all these there's all these crazy tricks with habits mm. that you can actually hack your way through um, building a habit using actually things that you love doing. Mm. Yeah, for sure, man. I even on that note of exercise as well. Subject of uh, sorry of exercise. It's like um, you know when I see when I hear friends or whatever wanting to get into the gym mm. and then now going all out like six days a week yeah. two hour sessions and I just know that's only going to last two weeks max yeah and it's like man just do incremental like yeah. in, just get into it incrementally yeah because it's going to be sustainable and it's going to begin once once you develop the habit it becomes effortless mm. and once something effortless you'll do it for the rest of your life Absolutely. and it will make you feel good. So as opposed to going all out two hours a day, six days a week, mm. just go for a five minute walk around the block yeah. every day. It's the same thing, and, the difference between going on a diet or making a lifestyle change. Exactly. And get rid of, and just the label, labeling it differently. Yeah. As opposed to, okay, my new diet is low carb, no sugar, blah, 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 all mm. this paleo, all this crap. Just be like, just be like, all right, that's just me. That's yeah. just who I am. I just don't eat sugar. I eat low carb. I eat high fat. Like that's just what I eat. Mm. It's not even a diet. It's just like part of part of who I am. But yeah, that's um, yeah, that's super important as well. But what about? Do you think that? Because I'm also into like information holidays as well. Mm -hmm. So basically, having a break from actually absorbing information, because yeah. sometimes there's a such thing now as like we live in the day and age where it's information overload, Absolutely. and there's also a lot of conflicting information. And if the conflicting information, what makes it more confusing is when it comes from two reputable sources. Mm. Um, so I'm also pro just completely switching off, like just switching off, no podcasts, no books, no YouTube and just having a bit of a break from that. And mm. usually when you kind of come back, you start to naturally develop a bit of different perspective on life and the way you want to do things. Are you kind of, what, what's your thoughts yeah, on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's information overload. Like it literally almost paralyzes you mm. how much information that there is out there. But it all comes back to application, mm. you know, right? It's like someone can read, you know, 100 books in a year, or someone can read 10 books 10 times in a year, mm -hmm. you know, and the dude, that, the dude that actually reads and applies what he's doing, so if he's reading the same book over and over again, he's going to get more retention, he's going to start applying all of that knowledge. And I think it's, so, it's, it's way too easy these days with all the podcasts, all the YouTube, all this information to just be consuming information without mm. any actually practical yep. application. Yeah, which is actually the, the toughest part. Yeah. And yeah. then it's like, especially when you got, like you said, conflicting information around mm. the exact same thing. But then it all comes back down to what you're actually applying and what actually provides results mm. in your own life. Like yep. when you're setting goals, like there is, a million different ways you can set goals, you can set a personal development strategy, all of this thing, but it all comes down to applying application um, and actually doubling down on the small amount of information that you're actually learning. Mm. Um, that's like when I'm reading a book, it's like no matter what book I read, I want there to be one concept that I can recall no matter what and I've actually applied that mm. to my life. Yep rather than just trying to slam all these books. For sure. And also it's um it's almost changing changing the whole notion of uh, as opposed to just absorbing absorbing less and implementing more. Yeah. So even for me as well, it's like I've got there's a whole bunch of books and a whole bunch of information which I've attained this year but mm. I haven't actually got around to actually implementing. Yeah. And that's something I really want to change as well, but read less, implement more. Mm. And I think you can have a dude that reads half a book but implements ten times more than the guy that read a yeah. hundred books. Yeah. And he's probably he's way do better, better off. Way 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 better in life. And even like, you know, we had our guest earlier today on the podcast and he doesn't even read personal development books but yeah. his output and what he does that's mm. his that's his lessons that's how he learns so it's not like it's not like you know there is that saying the difference between you now you now and you in five years is the books you read and people people mm. you meet i think there is a lot of truth to that as well 
Um, but it's not just about books. I think it's a lot about action. Absolutely. Um, and I see that as well. I see it's a well, lot it's of, why you're even reading the books. Yeah, and there's some crazy statistic about some like some absurd amount of people that actually buy books don't even read the books. Mm. They think buying the book and having it on the bookshelf is 95% of the job it done. Makes them feel smarter. Yeah, it makes <laughs> you feel smarter. And it does. I, yeah. I admit when I get a brand new book, I get that dopamine hit. I love And I feel smarter. Library. You put it on Instagram and you get a lot of those books that it looks good that you're reading it, but a lot of people don't even bloody read it yeah because um, it's so dense because it's so dense man so it's best to like simplify read less implement more that's mm. something i really want to apply apply this year and even to the biz as well and what we're doing you know because mm. sometimes we you know hear something or listen to something or read something and we get all, all get it on it we go balls deep for two months and maybe don't get the results that we're after and we're trying to change course but a lot of the stuff in order to actually see how effective it is you need to stick it out for 6 12 18 24 months yeah yeah which is tough right oh it's the super patience, tough the patience part why do you think why do you think it is such a small amount of people actually truly get into personal development like with a serious focus on their life um and there are so many people out there that you know they might be exposed to it they might mm. understand it a little bit but they live this life of yeah just <laughs> doing what they've always been doing yeah yeah i think it's also like quite a new concept mm. a lot of people think it's like this voodoo yeah woo woo like, woo woo spiritual spooky kind of stuff yeah. but and since it's invisible and since it yeah. ta takes time um so it's an intangible mm. thing that takes time um it's very private yeah so a lot of people don't see it it takes mm. a while for people to see the results publicly mm and um and it's hard work man and it requires discipline like those are all very off-putting things for a lot of people yeah. like people want instant they want the dopamine hit they want real quick they want simple they want painless yeah. do you know what i mean yeah. so it's all very conflicting and that's the whole bittersweet side of it is it's like a lot of pain to get to the sweetness in the end mm. and a lot of people don't like that and also too many people focus on the pain of the moment rather than the actual satisfaction of getting to the end yeah. and that's something that i've really shifted my mindset around like um there's a few you know a few things like even like say my financial goals it's like i used to be so impatient i used to want it in one year but i'd do a whole make a whole bunch of decisions that put everything in everything that i believe in in jeopardy because i wanted to give it goal in one year but actually it's mm. like you got to do it slow and it's going to take 10 years mm. slowly build over time let it compound but yeah i think it puts a lot of people off that's why I like there's a lot of people you know only five five two percent of business businesses but do over a million dollars and that's why what probably only three percent of people are actually truly happy with what they do in yeah. their career or even relationships you know they are in these shitty relationships which they've you know that the quality of the relationship they've created but they'll stick in it because it's easier to stick it at stick in it not stick mm -hmm. it out but just stay in it well it's the known right they yeah. they would rather they would rather stay in the painful known yeah than the potential unknown yeah, yeah, what yeah. that could bring yeah you know yeah for sure and it is scary you know oh it's super scary yeah and there's certain things i know for both of our our lives and you know it's and and, and sometimes as well it's like you just as as much as you kind of believe making a certain decision is going to create a better result you mm. still don't know yeah. and that's hard it's tough but i think the key is as well is getting really good at becoming a decision maker mm. and making decisions because no decision is a decision so you just need to start making everything just, matters everything matters eh? and just become a real good decision maker and i think like if you think that's the right thing to do just go for it and then actually start to start to and it sounds real geeky but it's gonna s real help help things but start recording your whole decision making yeah. process and why you made that yeah as well and also just making decisions like one of my friends was going through a whole bunch of personal crap and i just said the first he said oh what advice can you give me i don't want to get into the like nitty-gritty of the situation mm. i just said double down on your on your health because mm. the thing is if yeah. you're if you're in the best peak physical state you're going to make the best possible mm. decision absolutely yeah. you're in tune yeah you're in you tune have with yourself this, and your emotions we talked about this in the um 10 stories for 10 years yeah um 
where you talked about the moment when kind of everything in your life came crashing down mm. after you had built Isle of Ugly into this massive beast and that in you know in the most turmoil you've ever been in your entire life yeah in the most ruthless ruthless period of your entire life yeah you just doubled down tripled down quadrupled yeah. down on your own personal development yeah which is like the most insane thing ever like yeah. i'm super inspired just every time i think about it because like <laughs> you're absolutely crazy to do what you did there yeah and if you don't know what i'm talking about Listen to that podcast and find that. Which episode was it? It was the oh, 10 Devin, stories. Devin, can you find out? Yeah, yeah. It'll, be yeah. In the, it'll be in the show notes. Yeah. And it really shows the importance. You know, like if you're in the most ruthless period of your time and you can put all your focus back onto your own personal development yeah. and that's the thing that gets you out yeah. of this you know, this massive hole and then helps you rebuild your entire life. Yeah. You know, somebody who's not in a hole, if you're, even if you're in just a good life, personal development can completely change Definitely, your entire man. life. And by personal development, it doesn't just mean reading books, Tony Robbins mm. books. It's like the whole 360. Yeah. That's the same thing as you, bro. You really doubled down on yourself in the last three months. And we actually laughed about it, how you're like, I finally became a man. <laughs> but it's like, you know, you shifted house, you brought your first house, you you, know, you got a daughter on the way, you've you know, really prospered in your job and career, you kind of carved out a mm. bit of a you know, real clear vision in your mm. life, you know think, who you are. I, I think that's what it is though, it's the vision. It's like you have to have a compelling vision well, it, of your life. saying, with no vision, the people perish. Yeah. And it's so true. I was listening mm. to Jordan Peterson uh, his latest podcast about the power of aim mm. and the thing is is like if you don't have an aim and a goal mm. uh, like if you do or if you don't it's going to cause a lot of emotions if you don't yeah. you're basically going to be aimless so then therefore you're going to be you know, your shoulders are going to be slumped mm. you're going to be miserable you're going to be unsatisfied you're going to be a pain in the ass to those around you mm. it's just life's going to suck Whereas if you actually have an aim, if you have a goal, it gives you purpose, it pulls you through when you go through adversity. It's like a magnet, you know? Yeah. And I think that's like such a simple mm. little little tweak people need to have, just an mm. aim, just a goal. Even if it's a small fucking goal, like your goal yeah. doesn't need to be about changing the world yeah. or like... I think that's where yeah. so many people get caught up is they don't know what they want. Yeah. You know, oh, I don't know what I want to do in my life. But if you, if you, you know, were, if someone asked that person yeah. with a gun to their head, yeah, I guarantee you they could figure it but out. But the thing is, what episode? Uh, 11. 11. So episode yeah. 11 about what we was talking about before. Sorry, bro. It is, um, having a compelling vision is like the absolute key. Like you, without vision, people perish, as yeah. you said. But most people, they say, you know, I don't know what I want to do in my life. You know, I just don't know. But then they settle on the fact that they don't know. Yeah. But they're only thinking about, I don't know if they're driving along or, you know, they might think about it here and there, thinking about what they want to do. But like, if you want to figure out what you really want in your life, you just have to spend the time. Like you actually have to actively carve out time yeah. in your world, in your life to figure out what you want. Yeah. And most people, if you, like, if you, spend the time you'll figure it out or you'll get closer to it and then the more you carve out that vision the more motivated you are mm. you know the more inspiration there is in your life because you're aspiring to this future goal that to this future version of yeah. yourself yeah and it's just so important like everybody who has who achieved great things in life they have a clear idea of what they want to sure. go after yeah definitely and it's just absolutely so important and then even we talked about the reasons before like motivation by definition is a reason or reasons for doing something in a particular mm -hmm. way yeah so you know if i'm picking up this pen it's like why do i want to pick up this pen because i want to write mm -hmm. you know that's your motivation and so if you want to have strong motivation you just need really really strong reasons which mm. basically just says if you want to be motivated all the time mm. you've got to have really really strong reasons as to why you want to complete something or mm. why you want to work out or why you yeah. want to eat clean because what's your what's your thoughts on motivation because i just did that podcast episode a few weeks ago about why motivation sucks yeah. well people get people get um motivation and inspiration completely yeah um mixed up they think that yeah you know, what's the difference well like like i was saying motivation is a reason or reasons for doing something in a particular way but people confuse 
inspiration with motivation like yeah. inspiration is that feeling when you're just jacked you know yeah, you're yeah. juiced and you just want to do something you want to go out and work out yeah da, 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 because you've just got the short-term boost yeah but motivation is like a having a really strong reason to do something mm. and so it's basically why you know those like motivational speakers all these people they talk about having your why mm. like when your why the is, why is for key the why is literally yeah. everything because when you're facing an obstacle that's in your way you know, you can focus on the obstacle. And if you don't have clear reasons as to why you're going after this thing, you're going to be like, shit, that's pretty hard. Mm. You know, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Mm. But then if you switch your focus to your reasons, you know, okay, I need to do this because this, you know, this is going to help my family. This is going to help my relationships. This is going to help our, you know, if it's business, this is going to help our, fu our complete future. Yeah. And then the more reasons you have, the more motivation you have. Mm. You know, and so like, yeah, motivation is great, but you can't rely on motivation, you know, mm. because even if you carve out these reasons, like even at the beginning of this eight week challenge, like I was, we had, we mapped out what we wanted to do, what we wanted to achieve. And I had these super strong reasons, but as time goes on, you know, that motivation fades, right? You know, yeah, that, yeah. And that's when, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's that's when the habits kick in. That's when the habits you kick develop. in. Yeah, yeah. So you've got to have these completely ingrained habits in your life because you know 90 percent of the things that we're doing every day are just habits our oh, body for sure our subconscious is yeah. just taking Both over good and bad yeah yeah absolutely yeah. and so um, so what was your you know in the eight week challenge where you just wanted to eat clean and yeah yeah, yeah yeah really step up what was your reasons why the reasons why is like why did like, you want to do it what was your well the what i did as i talked about at the beginning of the episode was like i just linked this big picture goal, my 10 year goal to what I was doing this morning. Yeah. You know, when I was getting to work and I was like, okay, you know, a real big habit for me was like, when I get to my desk, what am I gonna do? Mm. You know, if the, the best mornings I have are when I get to my desk and then I'll put on my headphones and I won't allow myself to talk to someone or I'll just signal to the office you know, I'm getting in here quick. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll, you know, and then my I get in that flow straight away. Yeah. Yeah. But then it's like, it's not just that task itself. It's like mm. that task is important because if I can win that first hour while I'm at the office, I can win that, you know, that half day. Mm. And then if I can win that half day, I can better chance to win that day. Then that, the more I do that, the better my week is. The mm. better my week is, the better my month is. The better my month is, the mm. better this all is. And then For sure. the better I'm doing over these next couple of months is leading to my midterm goals. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so it's all about linking these tiny little minute behaviors to your bigger goals, mm. to your bigger purpose of life. Yeah, man, definitely. Yeah, it's a it's a gazillion steps. Yeah, um, habits it, are everything. Habits are everything, man. And just kind of going back to what you're saying about winning the day, that's something like a massive shift I made mm. when I moved out. I moved out of my house. Um, I, I bought that house out uh, like rural West Auckland, Piha. Mm. So for those listeners outside of New Zealand or even outside of Auckland, PR is like a like a pretty famous little beach town in Auckland, and I've got pretty much no neighbors and everything. So uh, it takes you know if I if I start work at say if I leave for work at six thirty seven o'clock, it's going to take me an hour to get to work. If I leave mm. at five thirty, it's going to take me twenty five minutes. So I've completely front loaded my day, and as a result of that, I've got to win the day and own the day mm. for the first two hours, three hours undisrupted. Yeah. And, win the um, morning, win the day. Win the morning, win the day, and it's so true. And I think that I basically start my day where I just have everything packed and ready to go the night before. I get up, I got my clothes, I don't even need to think. I put them on, and then I basically get in the car. The first 10 minutes of a car, I'm just silent. I'm yeah. either silent or I'm praying. And I'm also praying and declaring faith and favor on certain things in my life. And then I get to, and then I switch on audio, like education. Mm. So I, it's like car university. So whether it be whatever it is, Jim Rohn or whatever, I get to work. First thing I do, put my stuff down. My desk is already tidy, ready to go. And I've already got what I wanted to do for the day already planned from the night before, mm. before I leave. Even if it's not written, it's in my head get to the office, put my stuff down, go into the other room and I do this breathing technique. And I've been doing this for about three, four years now. It's this Wim Hof. If you don't know about it, you should check it out. It's Wim Hof. Absolutely yeah. insane. It's insane. Spelled W-I-M and then his H -O -F. last name Hof, H-O-F. 
Wim Hof breathing method. I recommend everyone I've recommended it to loves it and does it. Um, so I do I do that, and basically it's it's uh, free um, free sets of t uh, thirty power breaths. So. Mm. <sighs> like that and so you can look pretty weird if somebody comes in yeah but. it looks weird oxygenates all the blood oh. and then after doing 30 round 30 sets i hold the breath i do that three times i hold the breath and your blood is just flooded with it feels dopamine like fully on drugs fully on like drugs dopamine in a good way uh uh <laughs> endorphins it, that like ecstasy that. everything and then i do my goals and visualization and i'm so far deep into my subconscious i can, re oh, I can yeah. physically taste Come on. and see my goals and then once i once i do that i i go into the kitchen and i got my black coffee with butter um like organic unsalted butter and mct oils which is a derivative of coconut oil and i make a cocktail it's called bulletproof coffee We'll put that in the show notes as well. I have that and I'm just bullsh. I'm in the zone. And that to me, if I do that, I've just I've like completely <laughs> destroyed my day. Yeah. As in destroyed as in owned my day. Yeah. And uh and in the mornings, the mornings when I don't do that. And it's not like you're perfect. You don't do that every single yeah, day. But I try like, to do it. Yeah. Like I try to, but yeah, if I don't, the mornings I don't do but it, I notice, yeah, life happens. Yeah, life happens and kids decide to get sick and they're up at 4 a.m. Yeah, and yeah. this and that but it's uh and that's something as well i know you're big on morning rituals but that's something that i highly recommend oh. to do is to try to figure out a morning ritual so you can copy mine you can copy wills just google all the all the all the personal development mm. dudes or whatever a morning ritual is what changed my life and for me since yep, i've been I'd doing agree. it uh, since i put a strong emphasis on my mornings and my morning rituals um of eliminated anxiety i've had the ability to withstand higher pressure my clar clarity has increased health. My, yeah my health i'm um um so, oh i also forgot cold showers yeah and i know you're big on that i, so I do a cold it, shower i wake up and do the cold shower and i get changed yeah. and then even in winter i do my best to try to do cold water immersion and like in the book bush and waitakeries and i get my brothers and stuff and even my kids now um, I get them in there as well, and we're just in there for 10, 15 minutes. It feels like daggers in the chest, but it, it, it gets rid of all the inflammation in the body. You get those dopamine hits. You just feel like screaming, but that is like, yeah. that's, that's the game changer. That's probably one of my favorite things in life. Cold showers. Yeah. yeah. We need to get one of those cryotherapy chambers. <laughs> yeah. Where it just feels, your body feels like it's going into hyperthermia, yeah. and then it's just like, you feel feel great. But what's your what's your morning ritual? So mine has been pretty similar throughout the last the last four or five years wake up um first thing i do cold shower yeah so i've been doing that for a good do you fight. go hot and cold or just cold nah, bro. straight cold yeah. shock the system straight cold no hot water just straight in there for about 60 to 90 seconds yeah just all over the body it hurts yeah. sometimes you know sometimes i scream a little bit you know just to <laughs> especially let, in winter especially in winter which is really, really hard um, to get through. Um, but now I don't feel, now I feel worse if I don't have it. Hard because out, it man. just wakes me up and I've, been, I've become accustomed and yeah. addicted to this feeling of, you just feel as soon so as I wake crisp, up, man. yeah, it's like, you know, I only have that foggy feeling. Um, it's like one of the main ways to get rid of sleep inertia yeah. is having a cold shower yeah, in the morning. It's amazing. And so even it's like, if you're hungover yeah. not that we yeah. get hungover <laughs> <laughs> but yeah absolutely um and you can start with the hot water or whatever but yeah. the cold shower is so important so i'll wake up i'll have that sleep inertia inevitably um for three four minutes um because sleeping in perfect sleep cycles is like yeah i find that really really hard for sure so you have how many that, how many hours of sleep do you generally try to get at least i want to be in bed for eight hours like yeah. in bed like yeah. if i'm sleeping seven True. and a half that's kind of good yeah, that's going to change when you're a dad yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> but right now i have the environment but even karen walker you know she's like the super achiever and she said i've got to have my eight hours because sure. i feel like i do my family i do my friends i do my business a disservice if i'm not getting my optimal sleep yeah for sure because i become so optimal yeah mind. it's definitely something that's i think really overlooked mm. like people have this whole there's this whole buzz now gotta about, give up sleep yeah working till three in the morning and get yeah. up i think like yeah sometimes in life 
life there's periods of yeah. time where you have to sacrifice sleep to, to achieve get things done but long term it's not sustainable no. you need to get at least seven hours mm. you know i think even any more than eight hours is just sloth material <laughs> <laughs> anyway so i'll have my cold shower um and then as soon as i've had my cold shower i get dressed um i start thawing out <laughs> <laughs> the icicles then, melt. Yeah, and then I just make my um, bulletproof coffee the yeah. same. Unsalted butter, MCT yeah. oil, black coffee. Um, ends up tasting like a latte. It's actually kind of so nice. Good. It's actually re- I'm accustomed to it way yeah, more now. Um, and I have that, and then I sit down, and I've prepped everything the night before, like yeah. you said. It's not always perfect. Yeah. Um, but anybody can become a morning person as well by the way just a yeah, side note sure. anybody can and the I discipline agree. the discipline in waking up early in the morning consistency is the discipline at going to bed and mm. having a nighttime routine yeah. like that's how you can consistently yeah, wake which up which is early. obviously which is often overlooked as well yeah so what i would do i do is i just prep my stuff i'm going to use in the morning get changed and i'll make my I'll try to make my lunch the night before so that everything's yeah. ready and my morning's streamlined so i'll sit down with a coffee and i'm within about 12 minutes i've done my shower hat got my coffee ready sit down ready for my day um i spend a little bit of time in prayer um you can do whatever you want in the mornings um but it's having a routine that just gets yeah. you and you start ticking Definitely. these things off and also list. another sorry to interrupt another real key one as well which i do and yeah. i know you do which is also important for other people mm-hmm. is don't check your phone. Nah, don't you look can't. at your phone for the first half Boom. hour. As to soon hour. as you look at it, one man, that one message you one got, message, and that's in the back of your head. Yeah, man. Yeah, so yeah. sorry to interrupt, but no, that's something good. I know we both do. And then I'll spend my time in that spiritual time, um, and then I will. I'm pretty centered by then. My my you know my brainwaves have kind of slowed down from yeah. then. So I've got to this peak state um, with the cold shower and the coffee. And then I've kind of spent this time on myself and then I'll get into like some meditation. Meditation is just one of the most so good useful exercises yeah. in the entire world. Yeah. A lot of most, people can think it's just woo-woo, yeah. you know, spiritual again. Most, gr- most of the amazing yeah. performers do meditation. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Because it just starts to separate the conscious mind from the subconscious yeah. mind, right? Yeah. When you can start to really look at your life objectively you can look at your feelings objectively and you can start to you know just the the sheer exercise of sitting down and saying to your body you know you're not moving we're just going to sit here Mm. and telling your thoughts slow down yeah just i'm in control i'm in control and when your mind becomes more in control that's when the body so say if you have all these like really bad habits and you're like it's like the old i really don't want to eat that you know, like that cake that's there in the lunchroom, but then you just start smashing the cake. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. because you're... And then you feel guilty yeah, afterwards. Your subconscious, yeah. like your body is completely in control of your mind. Sure. Your mind has no willpower. Yeah. But when you're meditating, you, you're completely separating these two. You're saying to your body and your subconscious, you're saying, my mind is in control. Yeah. What I'm saying here is going. And then so the more you can do that, the more when you're actually in those temptation periods, your mind has more power than your actual body mm. um, and so meditation is absolutely so important yeah and then from there my mind is just so perfectly kind of lack of better words zen yeah um i'm just in a real mean space and then i'll just visualize for like five minutes whether yeah. it's my day whether it's my big goals because yeah. the brain can't actually tell the difference between what's and, reality what's and, reality and what you're visualizing yeah. if you're creating the emotion yeah because if you can create the emotion around a visualization yeah your brain is pretty much wiring itself to mm-hmm. complete that action yeah and so i'll visualize whether it's a day certain tasks mm-hmm. like i was saying in that morning i'll visualize um, putting my headphones in when i get to my desk mm-hmm. and just doing that it's like that's already happened and so as soon as i get to my desk it's like i just start automatically mm. putting in my headphones which is super dope and then from there um it's pretty it's pretty streamlined from now and then i'll just kind of review what i got to do for the day mm. um, but the morning routine is it's everything yeah yeah i i agree man when i the agree morning, when the day yeah no nah, definitely i also notice as well when um when i don't do my morning routine just things because feel a bit off it, yeah but also it reflects onto 
my kids as well because yeah. I think the kids are a f direct reflection of, of the parents mm -hmm. and if the parents are in control of their day mm. it's going to rub off onto, onto the kids as yeah. well so it's really trying to implement that with them it's um but no nah, it's uh it's real good evening and then obviously yeah and then you got the exercise piece as yeah. well evening which, routine is also really important yeah evening routine Shutting is really out good the phone, yeah turning off phone. computer like you often hear you often hear people like oh i've got trouble sleeping but it's like they're fucking watching tv yeah or they're looking at light. their phone right until the point they go to sleep yeah which is like a stimulus yeah so your your your, your, your brain your eyes everything yeah. and the blue light as well yeah is is it going to stimulate you where you should be winding down absolutely to get the best quality sleep and even if even if you're looking at your phone right up until you go to sleep even if you can get to sleep quickly you're going to have a worse quality sleep because your mind's still stimulated for mm. that first 45 minutes to yeah, for yeah. the first hour and then it's so important to yeah. kind of that nighttime routine really sets up the winning in the morning even what what I find as well, I have the best quality sleeps when I exercise. Yeah, like exercise during the day, because I I know you and me we exercise around you know midday, early mm. hour, which for me uh, just works for my lifestyle. Yeah, just because finding got, what works. Yeah, just finding what works. If there's no set time, I know a lot of people find a lot of benefit exercising in the morning. Um, but I think just making sure exercise is thrown in the mix. And once again, doesn't need to be too strenuous. Even if it's 15, even if you can squeeze in 10 minutes, yeah. it's better than nothing. But Absolutely. I think the same, the, the main thing is just for consistency, trying to do it, you know, at least four days a week mm -hmm. and you'll just start to feel better because the body's designed to move. And like all our ancestors were constantly moving. Mm -hmm. They were like, you know, harvesting, moving their bodies and the whole the whole concept of exercising is actually new age, which we've mm. created. But it's important because the body needs to move, the blood needs to be stimulated, stimulated. the organs, everything. It just makes you feel better. You think better. You behave better. It's easier to do yeah. things. You stick to your habits more. It's, um, yeah, it's real good. So what would you say for, say, somebody, you know, obviously exercising is a keystone habit. Like it makes you feel absolutely amazing. It makes your discipline a whole lot better. Uh, what would you say for somebody that, you know, they're like, okay, one of my big goals this year is to start exercising. Yeah. What would be your advice to them? My advice would just be, if, it's a, it depending on what stage, but let's just assume this person hasn't exercised in two years. Mm. Terrible habits. They might be slightly overweight. Yeah, so. overweight. I'd basically say just start going for a walk mm. for five minutes mm. every day. Micro. Yeah. yeah. And then just put on your favorite music, listen to it, mm. and then eventually that five will turn to 10, to 20, to mm. half an hour, and eventually you'll start running, even if it's the end. Mm. And eventually what will happen is you'll feel, feel so fantastic afterwards, mm. you'll start to become addicted to yeah, it and you'll start running. Aware, and honestly, yeah. I, I swear, like if you just do that, like if you can't do that, I can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, everybody yeah. has the capabilities, the, yeah. unless, you've, unless you don't have, unless you're missing legs, um, <laughs> <laughs> anyone's got to everyone has the ability but it's the mind that is yeah like, it's the mind but it's like down. man five minutes a day it's like if you really want to do it the thing is it's like you can't want something and not want to spend five minutes yeah. doing it like Absolutely. you're just you're just setting yourself yeah. up for failure and i think five minutes a day every day mm -hmm. and even if you're even if you're like even if you're underweight or skinny yeah. it's still important you know absolutely just to get the blood flowing and you know get the endorphins healthy going body yes yeah, stimulating the mind um another like a really really helpful thing for that is even if because you know there's a lot of people out there they might struggle to exercise and even if they it, it might find really they might find it's really weird for them that they do they you know they really want to start exercising but then they just can't do it you know they start or they you know the body just ends up taking over um like your subconscious mind and like training your subconscious mind around those things is so, so important as well. And so even if you're struggling to just maintain the habit just from like willpower, yeah, visualizing the activity when you're outside of when you're actually doing the activity. So mm. say like in your morning, you're like, okay, today I've got to go to the gym, you know, visualizing yourself and just being like, okay, going through the action in your mind of you going to the gym, doing the exercise. Yeah. And, and what it starts to do, like we talked about before, is it just starts to wire your mind to think that that activity is going to happen. Mm. And then the more the more power you have 
from the visualization, the more regular it becomes in your mind and then the easier it is to actually start doing these habits. And so mm. when you're trying to build a brand new habit, it doesn't have to be just in the habit itself um, where you get the um, ability to do it, but you can like go way deeper into visualization, into meditating and actually mm. rewiring your subconscious mm. mind. Definitely, man. And even... um even often during a day and actually encourage everyone to do it actually it's like just go for a walk yeah a walk around the block two minute walk five minute walk often it's all you need to unblock mm. or um you know come up with that with that thing that you can't seem to come up with a solution for mm. and it's just a great way as well just get some vitamin d natural sunlight stimulate the like mild stimulation of the body and you sit down and you're just kind of like you're vibing again yeah you mm. can feel that frequency yeah just of, of yourself kind of happening again so hold up so yeah, kind man. of coming to the end of this episode um hopefully you guys have got a ton of value from this episode yeah, i think so if you're a big fun. fan of kind of these kind of conversations between me and v just let us know yeah we um, can do some more but so kind of wrapping it up um for these people that want to make 2020 um 2020 the year the year that things, you know, really go to the next level, they start to make the changes they want to make. What advice would you offer to them other than reading the article that you wrote on that topic? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, I'd say a few things. I'd say once you, once you switch off from work or your career, like for the end of the year, just take a break. Mm -hmm. I think just take a break um, and just try to, just try to feed your, feed your body with some clean stuff. And then secondly, I'd start to just assess your surroundings and your peer group, your living situation, your relationship if you're one, your relationship if you're not in a relationship, the people you spend more, most time with, and just start to ask yourself: Is like, is this, is this the person I want to become? Like, is this person that I'm spending a, a lot of time mm. with? Is this the person that I want to become? And I think it'll start to kind of like clearly define whether or not these people are doing you a service or a mm. disservice. And I think once, uh, once, once, once you've kind of done that, it's almost like what we've been talking about for the majority of the episode. It's just like start breaking your life down in chunks about all the different areas. So your, your, you know, your faith, your relationships, your health, the money you want to make, the career you're doing. Like start to break down, break all those things down and create little goals mm. for all of those. And just don't, they don't need to be... They don't need to, and the whole point of us is to be fun. It's not to be a tedious task and break, break it kind of down and then make it so it actually gets you excited. And I think that's why the power of having a compelling reason why you want to achieve it is so important. Mm. But kind of break it down and make it so, design it so it actually gets you excited. Yeah. And I think that's what's going to like, you know, start kind of getting you, getting you back on that getting you back on that kind of success wheel mm. is things and goals that actually get you excited because the point of a goal is not to it's the whole point of it is to enrich the quality of mm. your life not to take away from the quality of your life i saw sure you're gonna have to go through a bunch of pain and some sacrifice in order to get to it but the mm. overarching goal should actually bring you fulfillment and joy so mm. that's kind of what i do like real light so decompress look at your look at your peer groups and then spend some time just actually breaking down the certain areas With of your yourself. life and, and some goals. Mm. And it's just like pretty light and easy. And I think if you can kind of get that and you can stick to it for like a couple of months, um, start kind of raising the bar and start to do things that are a little bit more intense and a little bit more, a little bit more strenuous. And the thing is, is like, you're going to actually, you're actually going to be, you know, you, you're going to welcome the challenge as opposed to shying away from it mm. because you're only in a real good momentum. And I think momentum is so key, so golden. There's motivation, but I think motivation, if you act if you act on that feeling of motivation to develop a habit, the habit is one is what's gonna get you momentum. Yeah. And once you've got momentum, you almost feel unstoppable. You keep just raising the bars of what you can do. And it's actually incredible about what we're all capable of, of as human beings, because I think so many of us are so like we're just not tapping into our, our true potential. I, I, you know, I'm, I myself am guilty of that. Mm. You see people that are doing just incredible things. The thing is, is they don't get from where they are 
where they were five years ago to where they are now to you know, be incredible just in one fell swoop it was just a yeah. whole bunch of tri like failure failures and trials and tribulations and habits. reassessing and habits and um but that all starts from what we're talking about now you know just small small little goals mm. developing small habits and then um and just building upon that small wins yeah man do you have anything yeah, to add good. to that yeah, I think, as you said, it's like taking the pressure off yourself, you know, you don't have to change your life in one day, you know, It's but it's actually spending the time on you to be with yourself. I think a lot of people are scared to actually be alone with their own thoughts, yeah. you know. Um, I'm sure every listener out there um, would be familiar with the feeling of as soon as you've got a couple minutes free time, you just, all of, your body just picks up your phone and yeah. you just start looking for this external stimulation um but like actually spending time with yourself and being in tune with your own thoughts mm. um with your own self and it's it's so important and if you're wanting to really make some change in this year it's creating taking the time to actually just create a clear vision mm. of what you really want and just yeah, spending man. the time you'll never figure out what you want in life if you don't actually spend, spend the time, time figuring out what yeah. you want in life yeah for sure um, funny that um and then yeah it's just like and just starting small like we've had aiming you know really working out what you want bigger picture but then coming back to behavior change you yeah. know that's what i want to achieve okay what is the behaviors i have to change you yeah. know what are the small bad habits that i've got to get rid of yeah um okay and how can i do these and mm. um just having a clear vision of your life um it pulls you you know it just yeah. creates that urge and the desire to go out and do more yeah um and then not just having the vision, but really strong reasons yeah. as to why you want to achieve it. Um, and then, yeah, just taking it day by day, creating clear systems, working on your routine, and just overarching, just placing a priority on improving yourself. Because mm. if you don't place a priority on improving yourself, nobody else will. Mm. Yeah, agree. Um, and so other than that, we could go on for hours yeah on but the that's subject. it right it's all end of the day it's up to you it's not up yeah. to your mother your father no your colleague you your boss it. it's all up to you yeah yeah so that's it so cool awesome man it's good that was good bro thank you everybody for listening if you enjoyed this episode and found any type of value please subscribe to our podcast share with your friends and give us a five-star review on iTunes to be in the draw to win a $200 I Love Ugly gift voucher. We will be drawing a winner monthly. Good luck and see you on the next episode.